Meet the Pink Panthers, the craftiest gang of robbers in the modern era. Their high-stakes jewelry thefts have become legends. Let's take a look at how these thieves operate and check out some of their most famous heists. In 2003, the Pink Panthers got the spotlight during the London Graf heist. They'd been around before, but this daring robbery brought them to the stage. The Panthers slipped into a store like any regular shopper, but then things took a turn. They grabbed all the valuables they could get their paws on. Get it? Pink Panthers? Paws? Eh, whatever. The police chased them and they caught one of the gang members, who had disguised himself as a customer. The police later found the stolen jewelry hidden in a skin cream container. Just like in the Return of the Pink Panther movie. And that's how the crew got their catchy name from the authorities. Since then, they've become the most successful group of thieves ever, pulling off heists all over the world. The next year, the Panthers struck in Tokyo, going for the Contessa de Vendôme necklace. They used clever tricks, pretending to be someone else by using forged passports. In and out in a flash, they made off with the stunning necklace worth $33 million. Dubai got its share of heists too. It witnessed one of the most audacious acts in 2007. With a dash of Hollywood flair, the Pink Panthers rammed two cars through a shopping mall, smashing into a jewelry store. The whole thing was caught on security cameras and even ended up on YouTube. Fast as lightning, the gang grabbed about $3.4 million worth of treasures and vanished, leaving onlookers in awe. The Graf Diamonds heist occurred in 2009, when the robbers shocked everyone by boldly revealing their faces. Some suspect they had cleverly transformed their appearances with prosthetic makeup. Fast forward to 2013, it seems the gang couldn't resist striking again, this time pulling off a dazzling caper in the Carlton Hotel in Cannes. With a baseball cap and a scarf as their quirky fashion statement, they vanished with $136 million worth of jewels and bling from the Livoliev Diamond House. This may well be the most expensive jewelry theft in history. Yet, even the Panthers couldn't always avoid the long arm of the law all the time. And some of their members ended up behind bars. But they are devoted to keeping their story as if it's a blockbuster movie script. Some members have broken out of prison. Take Milan Popovich, for example. He found himself locked up in Switzerland. Two of his Panther pals staged a dramatic prison break, ramming the prison gate with a car and keeping the guards away. Milan and his fellow prisoner escaped and disappeared into thin air. The Panthers lived up to their reputation as master thieves. In 2018, they greenlighted another project. This time, they were in Venice, Italy. They targeted the treasures of the Mughals and the Maharaja's exhibition at the Doge's Palace. In broad daylight, they pulled off an impressive heist, making away with expensive jewelry. These pros knew how to deactivate alarms and blend in with the crowd, vanishing before the police could catch them. Still, some members were later captured. A couple of years later, four Pink Panthers swooped into an art fair in broad daylight again. Their target was the booth of a London dealer displaying precious jewels like diamonds and sapphire earrings worth over $10 million. But the police were hot on their trail again. They made two arrests after the chase. This made me wonder who is the Danny of this Ocean's 12 type of thieves organization. Even though the Pink Panthers are famous, their organization is still shrouded in mystery. But a little bit of info has come to light. Olivia Kirkova spilled some beans in an interview, revealing how they stand out from other criminal groups. These Panthers don't just pick anyone for their jobs. It takes years to find the perfect people. And what's interesting is that there's no clear hierarchy. During a job, no one knows who's calling the shots, and the members stay mysterious even to each other. While the precise number of members remains undisclosed, Interpol estimates the criminal network to comprise approximately 800 core participants, with an undisclosed number forming their extensive international network. In 2013, a documentary titled Smash and Grab – The Story of the Pink Panthers shed light on this notorious gang. 
It included interviews with alleged leaders who discussed their history and revealed some of their meticulously crafted plans and robberies. Olivia Kirkovic, the alleged mastermind behind the gang, once claimed that she couldn't even keep track of how much money they had made from their exploits. They mostly snagged gold and diamonds, raking in a fortune over their 20 years of activity. Experts believe they've pulled off at least 370 heists, totaling around $500 million. Although the Panthers have stolen this much over the years, they don't get to keep it all. Kirkovic says they only get around 40% of the loot. The diamond buyers rake in the big bucks, selling them in underground markets where shady deals take place. So what is their game plan? For each heist, they assemble a small dream team of skilled individuals. Each member brings unique talents to the table. They're pros at surveillance. They sometimes have attractive women dressed in fancy jewelry to scout their targets. When it's showtime, they make a lot of noise and use flashy tactics to scare off victims without resorting to excessive force. When it comes to planning the heist, the Panthers are as sharp as their namesake's claws. They follow a structured approach, leaving telltale signs of their involvement. First things first, they find an investor to fund their operation. Then they secure three apartments one for the crew to stay, one to throw off the money trail, and the last one, only the crafty Kirkovic knows the location. After all, they need a place to stash their loot. Recently, the Panthers seem to be taking it easy with fewer heists on the radar. They've left behind some clues, and authorities are getting tougher on them. There are even copycats trying to imitate their style. But don't underestimate these crafty cats they might just be biding their time for another big score. As the Pink Panthers vanish into the shadows, leaving behind a trail of mystique, one can't help but wonder if they'll pop up again in some far-flung corner of the world, ready to add another twist to their legend. Now, there is another lady making waves in the headlines years after her notorious antics. It's Anna Sorica. Her story, too, is much like a fiction movie. She pretended to be a sophisticated and wealthy German heiress. In that way, she managed to deceive everyone she crossed paths with. From hotels to banks to even her close friends. Can you believe she collected $275,000 through her clever schemes? In 2017, her elaborate facade crumbled, and she spent over four years behind bars. My Friend Anna is a book written by her former friend, and there's a Netflix series, Inventing Anna, based on a New York Magazine article about her. Now, you might wonder, where's this con artist sorceress these days? Well, since October 2022, she's been on house arrest, living in a fifth-floor walk-up apartment in New York. With her ankle monitor on 24-7, she can't go out for groceries or hit the gym for some squats. Instead, everything gets delivered to her door, and she has a personal trainer. Her only chance to step outside is for her weekly meetups with officials. Quite the house party, huh? In the era of cybercrime and digital espionage, these types of classic tales of law enforcement and criminals are interesting to witness. Though her actions were controversial, there's a certain whimsical allure to her story that keeps us hooked. From rubbing shoulders with high society, to indulging in luxurious lifestyles, to keeping her disguise going, her story is indeed worth being content for readers and spectators.